you know, we're excited about it. It's an opportunity for us. We're having uh, our Student Appreciation Day, which is really pretty cool. We had a great turnout last year. Um, you know, obviously we're all in this thing together. That, you know, you know A&M talks about their 12th man and, you know, Virginia Tech, we, we surely are. We have a, a strong contingency ourselves, uh, which is pretty cool. And this is just another way for us to thank them by allowing them to come out. And, you know, hopefully with the, the weather will stay good. We'll have a big crowd out there. So um, anyway, with that being said, let's see what you guys got. When we last talked, you hadn't really seen Divine Diablo, Caleb Farley in the field at all. Now they've had a full complement of the spring levels. What, what do you think of how they've adapted to the, the secondary? Uh, I've been really excited about both of them. Um, you know, Caleb's played a little bit of offense here lately, and uh, um, as well as defense. Um, you know, he is a dynamic athlete with dynamic potential. But I'm really excited about um, where where he's where you know where he's how far he's gone as far and come as far as a football player at the corner spot. Um, is he there yet? No. But do I like his length? Do I like his explosiveness? Do I like his ability to learn and improve and uh, grow and develop? Yes. And I think he's got a great, great future. Um, Divine has been everything we hoped for. Um, has been very consistent, very steady, has improved every day, has been physical. Um, I've been real pleased with his coverage ability. That was always a thing, being a longer guy, being a guy that's been attacking a defender rather than backpedaling and, and moving away from an offensive player or, or, you know, or a defender, so to speak. He's, um, I've been pleased with that. You get longer guys, sometimes they don't have the, the turnover that you like as far as DBs with their quickness and explosiveness with their feet. And he has those things. And I've been real impressed with with what he's done and how he's picked it up. And, and um, you know, he has great leadership qualities. Um, and that's what that position entails a little bit, too, in our scheme, at our safety is a communicator, is a quarterback, so to speak, and, and um, he's, he's, uh, he's steadily improved in that, that capacity as well. Given that um, having sort of a three and three or four man rotation at your end spot has been so important to you over the years, and you haven't seen an awful lot of any of Trevon and, and Benny this spring, have you seen a couple of guys develop? You know? Yeah, I tell you what, um, you know, we've. That's been a position of question and concern for us. Uh, I do think we've answered some questions uh, with some guys. I do, are, are we, like I said earlier, are we where we want to be yet? No. Um, you know, with, and you've got a couple guys in um, Belmar, uh, in uh, Ray Miner, uh, in Xavier Burke that have been there for, this is day 13 at defensive end. And, uh, but I've seen a big improvement. I see a couple guys that can really help us. And uh, we're going to have to have a big summer, though, and not just at that position, but at a couple positions. But that position in, in particular, whether it's with those guys I just mentioned continuing to grow and develop. I mean, we're going to have to – we'd like to finish with the spring game and then turn around and have 15 more practices. We're not allowed that. But uh, through skills and drills, work that they can do on their own through the weight room, through film study, through getting out and – Rehashing what they've been taught, uh, we need to we need to make improvements from uh, this Saturday until we report back for fall camp. Um, but those I've been pleased with some things that those guys have done. Um, there's some explosiveness there. There's some athletic ability there, um, and uh, there's I've been encouraged by um, by where we've gone from day one at, at that spot with those guys. Fair to say that there's at least an opportunity. For a young guy coming in August to make an impression. Of yeah, there will be. There will be. There will be. But I, I do feel better about the position now than I did, uh, you know, four weeks ago. I can tell you that. When you look around the room and, and see how much experience you have coming back, despite the important holes you have to fill, does this look like a defense that could, you know, several years ago, um, your guys set be a number one defense in the country as a goal? Does this look like a defense? Because of the amount of experience you have coming back, that could, you know, not set that as a goal, but 
contend for that? No, you know, I don't know if I want to say that's the the mark. I mean, that we we have high expectations here, and um, uh, and these kids understand that. Um, we have some holes to fill, so to say that we're our expectation to be the best in the land is, I mean, I, that's probably we're we're not there yet. Um, but um, our expectations are to be one of the best, and that, that puts us in a position to be competitive and, and uh, be who we want to be, not just as a defense, but put us in a position to be the type of team we want to be as an offense. Um, you know, the main stat is I've gotten older and the way offenses have changed is, uh, you know, the bottom one that, that matters is what's on that W and L column, you know. And if it takes us playing a little better defense and winning by one or offensively playing and making a play and win, winning by one that way, then that's, that's all that matters. We played well enough on either side of the ball to get that done. Uh, but along those lines, we do have an expectation to play at a certain level. Um, we do have some frontline kids that I think, particularly our first team guys, that can do that on a consistent basis. But in order for us to be an elite defense, we, you know, there's going to be a time during the course of the year where there's going to be an injury and setback, adversity that somebody else is going to have to step in or, or multiple people have to step in. And, and I still think that's where we've got to, to be an elite defense, I think that's where we've got to close the gap at some positions too uh, in our depth, you know, as far as the quality of and being consistently good. So. We saw Brandon face on in here. He was talking about we kept after the interception numbers, and he said you know, he's a much better player now than that first year when he happened to get all those picks. What have you seen from his development, and how much of a better player? Is he right now? Then? Yeah, all the way around. I, I think, you know, you can go back to look at those plays and, you know, some of those were tips and overthrows and things that, and we protected Brandon a lot back in the day. And then now we put him in a position where he's going to be more uh, challenged and he's going to challenge receivers more than he did it in, in that, in that uh, time in his career. Um, and that's where he's grown and developed. Obviously, his skills and technique and fundamentals and all those areas have continued to improve. Um, this year, it's been good to have him in the weight room from day one, um, being involved, being there full time, not not rehabbing something, and you know getting bigger, faster, stronger, but also being in a position to be a leader. And that's why he stayed and to continue to grow and develop, but also develop those skill sets that, it, that we're looking for, for him to be that leader that we need. And, and that's, uh, uh, I've been pleased with what he's doing right now. Well, you know, what kind of a student he is because of the Bible and all that. Is he a good teacher? Does he work well with the, the younger kids? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. I think that's the one thing all of our kids here do. We, Like I said, our expectations are high. And I challenge our kids. You should be able to take a kid under your wing and help develop him by uh, not just showing him how to do things in, on a day-to-day -day basis of how to work and you know where this is and where you should put your clothes and those type of things, but you know how to work as a football player, how to sit in the meeting room and take notes and be prepared, and how to get your mindset going to step on the field um, and, and be ready to go practice every day in a workmanlike way, in a lunch pail mentality way. And um, you know that's where he's been, and all of our guys are beneficial. I expect them all. They should be able to. A guy like Brandon, or a guy like Andrew Matua Pawaka, uh, a guy like Ricky Walker right now. Uh, I'm just using those guys as an example. They should be able to take a freshman and teach them, uh, you know, and take them under their wing, but teach them uh, their position and, and the expectations of, you know, what we're looking for. How has Devontae Beckett handled the move to Mike? It's been very good. You know, that's a little bit different than backer, some subtle things. Um, but he is a, an outstanding football player, outstanding football player. Um, at times, has been a little all over the place, like you would expect a guy with a new move. And uh, but the guy knows one speed, and um, uh, I couldn't be more excited. And I, I think it's a great fit for him. How has Reggie Floyd progressed at that rope spot? Very well. I've been very pleased with Reggie. Um, he's dropped a little bit of weight. 
uh, I like his abilities. We've always, I always felt good about him attacking the line of scrimmage. Um, the question mark was what he could do away from the line of scrimmage. And I think he's answered those things for us this, this spring. And um, I really like just his mindset, his uh, demeanor, um, his approach to everything. And, and um, you know, he's had a really good spring. Did you talk much, or does it even come up at all, about the fact that there's a guy coming in here in July that might be challenging for us? Yeah, I mean, he was here all week this last week. So, um, oh, no, I mean, no, if he missed a tackle, maybe I was over there in his ear. Hey, see this guy? No, but, uh, um, no, I mean, you know, that's competition is healthy. And for us to be the type of team we want to be, we have to have quality depth and we have to have competition in each spot, you know, to continue to grow and develop. Um, individually but to continue to grow and develop as a team and and that's what we'll have in in that situation I do know this for us to be successful we're going to need Reggie Floyd uh, we're going to need Devin Hunter uh, you know whoever else is going to be in Khalil Ladler who's in there battling I mean all those guys are going to bring something to the table uh, whether it's on defense or whether it's on special teams um, and um, I'm excited about all that. Those kids, they, they've came, you know, both Khalil and Reggie have both um, gotten better and worked extremely hard, and I couldn't be more proud of them how they've, how they've approached this thing this spring. Yeah. Newsom, played a bunch of different positions. Say that again? Yeah. yeah. You know, I wish with Dion, since we moved him, I would like to have him one more year. He almost reminds me he's a skill set better than, um, oh, I just had his name. We called him Skills. Um, 757. Sweetie? No. Brendan Hill. Hill, thank you. You know, Brendan played one year for us at, at uh, WIP. And would have lied to allow. I wish I could have had him for one more year. He just had a gamesmanship about him. Kind of reminded me of Mook Reynolds a little bit. A little bit bigger than Mook, but Mook can probably move around a little bit better, cover a little better, but just has some instincts. And and um, Dion reminds me of that a little bit, except he's a little faster and twitchier. And and I've been really impressed with his coverage ability, his ability to make plays in, in space, which that position entails. Um, and I think he's put himself in position to help us. I mean, he's going to compete for, with, with Mook for that spot, but also when we start getting into our 30 package and um, looking for maybe in a, uh, maybe a particular game that you need an extra defensive back, but a guy that can be a pretty good blitzer type guy that might have a little bit more speed than maybe a guy like a Chicago or you know somebody that we've used at that bandit spot before. And I'm not to say that you know there's, but there could be a there there you know he's done enough things that um, I've been really really impressed with him. And he's had one of he's been one of the players that's probably had you know one of the better springs this spring in Dion. And I'm really I'm really appreciate what he's the effort he's put into it and how he's progressed. Well, you said the competition is positive. Has there been any maybe unspoken sense among the defensive guys that with Justin having such an offensive reputation that the defense wants to, I don't know, get make sure they do enough to, I don't know, hold up their end? Or no doubt. Enough? I mean, I take note of that myself, you know. I mean, uh, I, the one thing I will say about um, our offensive guys, and you guys know we've had, we're a little thin at some spots with, with spring, and um, the one thing that, this offense can do is manufacture production and manufacture points. Um, and they've challenged uh, me, they've challenged us as a defensive staff, they've challenged our defense on the field daily with um, ways of attacking us and, and how we have to adjust and adapt and move forward and different things. I mean, it's, it's but I'd like to think we've done the same to them. So. Um, from a competitive standpoint, yeah, there's. I think there's, there's. They want to get after us, and we want to get after them. But at the same time, we're developing that culture that 
we're making each other. We're going to work extremely hard, and, and we're going to go fight and play hard. I'm saying fight with every play, giving our best effort. But then at the end of the day, we're, we're still in this together, but we've made each other better. And, uh, and we had that before. We've got it now. And, but, you know, not to say this in a negative way, but there's been times in the past where if we had – certain setbacks or things that we would just kind of, you know, bang our head against the wall where this group right now with certain setbacks, they're going to find a way to, you know, make things happen. And that's exciting from my end of it right there. But that's also, that's where they challenge us every day.